I'm Jamie Braithwaite. I'm Garth Braithwaite. And we are here on a Taco Tuesday to talk to you about... We can talk about any of it. So, like, I think the hard part right now that hasn't been figured out and I would like to see done, like if I could magic wand fix social media, it would be fix ratings. It would be fixing content. Um, Wait, what do you mean by ratings? So, right now, if I wanted to, I can set... Um, a content rating for my kids that oh. they're allowed to consume on age. Yeah. Like PG, PG 13 rated R. Right. And they are not perfect by any means. Right. But they are something and they're a good backstop. So I can have on my kids, Netflix profile, I can say, Hey, you're this age. This is the, this is the level of content that you're able to, to see. Um, you can't do any of that on social media. So let's talk about that a little bit because there was that legislation that was going through. Yeah, they were working on it. So let's talk about, let's tell people what that was because maybe that can help bring to light some of these things that are happening. So part of the problem is that social media, if they suddenly had to have a content rating system, um, it would be very hard to curate that. Anytime anything happens with like... Because I can post whatever I want and it goes live immediately right so how is somebody going to say that's rated r or that's rated pg right and but we know that they can do it to some degree right like we don't have rampant child pornography on these social media like sure it's possible that some of it's on there but it, like they have controls same thing with you know some extreme content they have the ability to take some of these things down relatively quickly okay so they do have it but if you wanted to label and categorize every single thing that was made that would be a pretty heavy load. So that's possible that that's one of those things that like... AI could help with. AI might be able to actually be helpful in those situations. It's not going to be perfect and you're going to get some people really mad because you're going to somehow accidentally label it as being R-rated when it right. should probably be Which, some... And I've accidentally had things flagged as right. like inappropriate when it really wasn't. It's, it's just a... It's hard for humans to do it. It would be hard for computers to do it as well. So rating is something that you would change. Right. And I would love for parents to be able to have control of certain aspects of the social media on their kids' phones. In what way? So like right now, if one of my kids wanted to get Instagram because they like sharing photos with their friends, I can't say, yeah, let's do Instagram for photo sharing, but let's not allow reels. Mm. Or let's do um, for photo sharing, but you can't follow people we don't know. Kind of like... Marco Polo is family reels, right. essentially. Well, yeah, it, 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 that's, yeah, it's and supposed to be smaller circle. It's just not cool. Like we tried selling the kids on like, do Marco Polo. Get everyone on Marco Polo. They want to do TikTok, but you just do Marco Polo. And yeah. like, we're just the worst parents ever. Well, the, the reason that y you have no FOMO from not having Marco Polo, right? Like you're not missing out if you're not on Marco Polo because there's no larger societal or cultural things happening on Marco Polo. It's just people you know. But it, on Instagram, on TikTok, you have people who are making memes, who are making content that then become part of the cultural zeitgeist that, and especially at schools, like it's hard to know what's gonna take off in these different age groups, but suddenly like your kids love watching Twitch and watch videos of people playing video games. Um, and like those are those are things that they want to be part of the conversation. When they go back to school the next day and people are talking about something, they have missed out. They didn't get to see what these people are talking about. Or these kids now have like an inside joke because they'll make a reference to something that they've all seen that your kid hasn't because they're not a part of that. And it's it's not fun to be felt like an, an outsider. And it's very easy for it to be like, it's because my parents don't let me have this thing that I'm not a part of the rest of, I mean, teenagers already feel like they're weird and they're on the outside. Yeah. It doesn't take much, right? Yeah. And our kids aren't on TikTok. So, but I very, but having them on reels, being able to have time on Instagram, it's not really any different. Yeah. So it, it's hard. I don't, I don't um, tell any parent who has restricted technology a lot that they're doing something wrong because 
every kid is different, every situation. That's another hard part about it. If you have one child and you're like, well, my kid's doing this and it's going well for them. Uh, they're doing okay in school, so we're going to be okay with them having technology at this age. The next child is going to be like, well, when can I have it? You can't just say, well, we have this rule in our family that at this age, everybody's ready. Not everybody's ready at, at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and in future episodes, we'll talk a little bit about how it is that we've presented technology with our kids. But the, And that's exactly what happened. It got blown out of the water. Like we had great plans. And then we got a type 1 diabetic at nine and she needed a phone to be able to remote monitor. And it... I, I wouldn't even say we had great plans. I think we just knew that we didn't have to worry about it yet. Yeah, that's And then true. suddenly we had to worry about it. Because we yeah. had to send technology with our kid to school for us to be able to monitor her, her health while she was there. Um, so yeah, that's tough. And it's, other parents have the same problem, right? Like they've got to send their kid to school. They don't want to send them with technology. But then you've got to be able to communicate about rides because there's things that are changing with right. situations. Like you, can't, it wasn't like us as kids where you had no way of calling your parents unless it was an emergency, and so you just knew the this is the plan. the plan. It was always the same. Anytime you were like, oh, so-and-so wanted me to ride the bus home with them and go home with them and play at their house, but I hadn't checked with my parents first, the first time you do that and you get in big trouble because your parents... Because you went missing. Your parents didn't know where you were. Yeah. You were like, ah, I can't do that anymore. So. And that's not the case anymore. No. Because we're so connected. Yeah. People can change plans all the time. Well, and even parents change plans. Like yep. Who's going to pick up the kid or who's going to be there? And, and suddenly a meeting that you you thought you were free in the afternoon and then suddenly a meeting gets put on your calendar. And like, Especially remote workers. Yeah. So it's, it's it's we're all living in times that are changing much more frequently because communication is more open and easy to reach people. Yeah. So there's amazing benefits of technology. And there's some hurdles that people have to... We just all have to survive and figure out together. And I think that's the, the big part as well. Is like it's really easy to demonize technology and to be like it's evil, it's bad. The upsides are not worth the the downsides. Let's just keep it away. The problem is that you can't control anything forever. Even if it's while they live under your roof, you have certain rules. They're going to leave. That's the goal. Your, the goal is to prepare them to leave. And if they've never been able to figure out how to control and put limits on themselves, they'll never know how to do it once it's time for them to leave. If you're the only source of the limit in their life, they're going to go out and they're going to they're gonna just explode with the options available to them. Yeah. They may not. And right? It's not guaranteed. But yes. you're definitely not setting them up to be ready for it. And back to the arms race that we talked about at the beginning, we do need to set boundaries. We are the parent and the adult in this situation, and they are an underdeveloped prefrontal cortex brain that we have stewardship over. Yeah. And everybody needs to feel inspired and do it correctly for your own family. Your family's going to look different than our family, and I hope so. And our family will look different than your family. I, I think that to recognize open communication about it is really important. And that's what I hope that this Tuesday talking with Garth is going to be able to help with some of the things that are happening in the technology atmosphere. I don't know. The, is that what you call it? The, it's this thing is some of this content that we're talking about right now, it could change tomorrow, right? Like, oh, yeah. Social media today is not going to be what it is in the near future. Which also jobs can change too. Like the things that the kids are learning now, they all have Chromebooks at our schools. They, the things that they're learning are going to impact the jobs that we don't even know that they will be able to have. Like your job didn't exist when our parents were raising us. No. And our kids aren't using graphing calculators. Why would you? You can get Google to graph any function you put in there. Right? Like, Oh, I didn't even think about that. No, things change all the time. And I mean, it goes back to that thing you were talking about teaching technology, right? Yeah. Like you'll never be able to, and it's not even, you'll, you'll never know more than the kids. That is part of it. Um, but you'll never know what the kids need completely. So your best, your best hope is to teach them how to learn because they're going to have to keep doing that. I love spending time with Garth. Actually, Garth and I have these conversations all the time. Jamie and always wants to record them. I have finally convinced him to have these conversations on a microphone. She tricked me. She just sat me down and she said, don't worry about this other stuff. Just, gonna, <laughs> just pretend like nothing's... Don't, don't notice. Like, 
we're just chatting, <laughs> you know, in my yellow chairs in my office. If you have questions for Garth, that's actually probably a good thing. Like, let's ask Garth. What, dear Abby? <laughs> like the dear Garthy. <laughs> dear Garthy. Oh, I will say that Garth is like the emotional chat. GDB. <laughs> GDB. Is it's GDB. Garth has some of the best responses. Again, it's a lot easier. Like I, I don't want to. I don't want to say what I'm doing. What I can do is universally helpful. It's much easier to help other people with their problems when I don't have an emotional response. I'm very good at separating my emotions from other people's problems. Well, I am not. I am very good at having lots of emotions about all the problems and bringing them to you and working through those together. So I'm really excited to have you on this podcast, whether you want it to be or not. We're at time. We'll see you next week. Yeah.